Hi, I'm Mark Pagani, author of Fearless Photographer Travel, published by Course Technology PTR. In the next few minutes, you'll see video footage and photographs of a recent excursion to the Nepal Himalayas, where I shot travel and expedition images of an attempt to climb 20,500 foot Pachermo for stock and for my book. I'll also give you a few tips on how I got some of the shots that you'll find in my book, which is soon to be released by Cengage. This is the third time I've been to Nepal, and it's always an exciting and challenging place to shoot great travel images. After an emergency landing on my flight from Chicago to Delhi, I finally ended up in Kathmandu, which is a really interesting city full of Buddhist culture, climbers from around the world, and tons of great photo ops. I try to shoot from unusual angles, like at this Buddhist temple in Kathmandu. I also make sure to shoot some everyday scenes and focus on subjects that have repeating patterns. I love shooting at night, wherever I travel. The light's always very interesting. After yet another emergency landing on a mountainside on our way to the tiny airstrip in Lukla, aka the world's most dangerous airport, we were relieved when we finally made our landing and the trekking began. Getting photos of the transportation in a region is a good way to begin telling a story about that area. Again, shooting everyday life really gives the viewer a sense of place. Portraits don't always have to be of people's faces. I can give the viewer a lot of info even in this shot of the girl's feet. It's also nice to include a lot more of the environment to inform the viewer. We continued our trek up to higher altitudes as we got closer and closer to our goal which was to climb the mountain called Pachermo. It rained for much of every day due to a late monsoon season. The clouds lingered, making the possibility of getting some great shots of these huge Himalayan mountains very remote. A big part of life in this region is the porters. With no roads, the only way to move goods from point A to point B is on the back of these very strong men and women. Namche Bazaar is the largest village in the region and a hub for trekkers and porters. Shooting wildlife is also a great way for your photos to give the viewer a taste of life in the region and can be approached much the same way you'd approach a human portrait. Shooting moving water is best done with a slow shutter speed so that the water has a smooth, almost milky look. This image ended up being the cover of the book and was shot during a rare glimpse of sunlight. Because I had a camera reporter, I was able to bring lighting equipment up to this very remote spot, our base for Pachermo. These portraits were lit with an off-camera Nikon speed light. At Pachermo Base Camp, we enjoyed another few moments of clear blue sky and marveled at the amazing high Himalayas all around us. It was a gorgeous day. As the air got thinner and the breathing got tougher, we continued to move upwards towards our Camp 2 on Pachermo and the landscape lost all color, flora, and fauna. Due to the late monsoon, there was a great deal of snow on the ground, and we had to fix lines to help the porters navigate the rough terrain. We made it up to our camp too, and were greeted with a plethora of small and large avalanches and recent avalanche debris. We witnessed one of these avalanches demolish our proposed high camp. It looked like our quest for the summit would end here. We were in a very beautiful, yet very dangerous place. We would spend one night here, listening to the avalanches fall all around us, and head back down. Avalanche debris covers much of the area. A wide-angle lens comes in handy for this type of shot. Shooting from the inside of a tent gives the viewer an I am there feeling. Shooting with the climber in the shot gives the viewer a sense of scale. Selective toning via Nick Software's plug-in suite gives this image an interesting look. Making a point of placing the subject to one side of the frame rather than the center is visually interesting. When shooting flora, it's nice to have contrasting colors in the image. Again, shooting some lifestyle images is a great way to continue telling the story of the region. Once we returned to Namche Bazaar, the day after enduring several avalanches tumbling down above our Camp 2, there was an earthquake that registered 5.9 on the Richter scale that violently shook the village and our tea house. We spent a sleepless night anticipating aftershocks. It was certainly with much relief then that we made it through all of the troubles and turmoil 
and were able to get back onto a Terra airplane at the world's most dangerous airport. We flew safely back to Kathmandu and then home again. If you're interested in learning more about fearless travel photography, look for my book, Course Technology PTR's Fearless Photographer Travel by Mark Pagani.